Hey, hey, hey. Time for the out of this world story from our space. Closure happens right after you accept that letting go and moving on is more important than protecting a fantasy of how our relationship could have been. Today in our space, we learn that we have to stop looking for happiness in the same place that we lost it. Up first, inhale the future, exhale the past. Entitled ex and cousin think I'm doing bad in life. Oh, but the tables have turned. I, 26 female, dated my ex, 43 male, from 2018 until late 2019. I met him while at a get-together, and his cousin, who was the same age as me, introduced us, and it was a click. We did not care about the age gap, we were happy and in love until I decided to take him to a family gathering. If I could take back time, I would not have gone after what happened next. I presented him to everyone, and one of my cousins, 25 female, had the habit to go after the guys I would spend time together or try to date. She functioned as she could not stand him, and I was proud that he would clap back, but the changes happened after the event. We would always go on little dates, and he would not be available. We would take road checks, and he did not want to. He would not be intimate with me. He would start little arguments with me for no reason, sort of comparing me to her, something I despise, and would not even let me visit his apartment. I had a feeling that he was cheating on me with her, when I would say her name, he would go pale and start stuttering. So, I decided to investigate. All his texts would be transferred to me, thank you Apple, as evidence of his cheating. A co-worker would tell me his schedule and I had an extra key to his apartment, just in case I wanted to catch him in the act. So, one day when he said that he would work extra hours, a co-worker of his confirmed that he left his workplace, and I decided, now was the time. I went over to his apartment and my suspicion was true, he was having sex with my cousin. I wanted to scream, cry, or commit even a first degree, but I was frozen in place with a poker face. When they did notice me, they tried to make up excuses. I just took a picture, sent it to a WhatsApp group chat, grabbed my stuff, and left. As an act of revenge from both, I would receive photos or videos of them together. I was disgusted with both. I did cry and suffer. I even got to the point where I deleted all my social media, and I would avoid my family gatherings because... If I would see them, I would want to rip their eyes out. But I decided to change and work on myself. It was the best two years of my life. I started kickboxing workouts, seeking therapy, learning new languages, cooking classes, yoga, and going out more. About a year ago, I decided to become an Instagram and TikTok influencer, but telling the stories of my life and exploiting my country, Puerto Rico, and started to enjoy it. I even started dating an old high school classmate, where our chemistry is amazing, and who treats me like I deserve it. So, two weeks ago, I was invited to a family gathering and he tagged along. I was scared that history repeated itself, and boy, I was proven wrong. I saw my ex and my cousin, and he looked miserable, as she started flirting with my boyfriend in front of him, and my boyfriend called her out and embarrassed her in front of everyone. Everyone was happy, but she was mad throughout the entire evening. At that moment, I realized that he was amazing. Throughout the days, while uploading the content to Instagram, I received a new follower, and it is my ex. I let him be since... He could see how well I am doing without him. The best form of revenge is showing an ex how well you are doing without them. The community reacts this way. Marble Free says, Good for you. Your ex and cousin deserve each other. Being happy is what matters, so please block your ex and cousin and just live for you. Different Ball 771 quips, If I could take back time, I would not have gone after what happened next. I honestly don't know why she said this. If it wasn't your cousin, it was going to be someone else. Be glad it happened sooner rather than later. Clumsy Ginger Ninja 13 says, Yes, get it, girl. This is some awesome glow up revenge with a wonderful happy ending with a better man that you needed. Enjoy your life with that awesome man you got and screw your cousin and your ex. Sometimes a good screw ain't worth a relationship when you're cheating. People can be idiots. Sorry, petty about cheaters. Horribly cheated on in the past when I was pregnant. First of all, when the act tries to make up excuses while caught in the act, like they tripped and fell on each other naked or something, my goodness. Secondly, I'm sorry if all of that happened, OP, but it turns out that it definitely guided you into the direction you were always meant to be heading. Way to go for turning a situation around. Things have a really funny way of working out, and you're probably right. The best form of revenge is showing those who hurt you in the past how well you're doing without them. Revenge is best when it's sweet and full of self-love and self-respect. Keep it up, lady. Own your value. 
I'm so proud of you for opening up and sharing your story with the world, OP. There are so many people out there who experience the same things and often feel very alone. It's nice to know that there's someone out there who can offer a safe place for those who are struggling through the darkness right now. What do you think is the best revenge? Let us know in the comments. Even better, let us know how you sought revenge on an axe. Meanwhile, up next, to heal the wound, you need to stop touching it. Help me. I'm looking for some help. I need closure on the situation. Last year, my ex and I ended things. We didn't have a terrible relationship. We had good times, but our main issue was respect. He came from a more chaotic family. They cursed each other out, and sometimes manipulative. It's like a family, but everyone looking for themselves. My family is different. The love is genuine. We don't curse at each other. My family is very affectionate and loving. These differences were the root of some problems. For instance, he would think it's okay to call me a B-word, and his mom said it to his sisters. His sister said it to each other. He said it to them. They said it to him. It was no big deal. My dad has never, would never, call me or his wife outside of our names. It was a big deal. Boundaries like these caused regular, short-term breakups. We met in early 2019. By the end of that year, I was pregnant. By mid-2020, I had given birth. He had been in a few life-threatening situations in her hometown. Shootings, being shot at. Her hometown is chaotic. I've been shot at, too. He decided to move out of state shortly after the birth of our child. I was in support. I was scared he'd die, to be frank. I didn't agree to move because I didn't trust him as my only support system miles away from my family. He'd proven to be as manipulative as his family, and I thought it'd be better opportunity to manipulate me with fewer influences. He stayed gone seven months. Our child was two months when he left, nine months when he returned. I grew resentment for this. I felt the while away, he did little to nothing for our child, sent little to no money. He came back like three times within those months, but that wasn't enough. He didn't prioritize fatherhood. I come from a good father, so I lost respect for him. I felt he should have done more. While he was away, I began speaking with this guy online. I was single at the time, although I knew there was a potential to get back with my child's father. I was single. I wasn't able to see my child's father regularly, and I didn't know or trust that he was being faithful to me. He still flirted on social media, and I couldn't do anything because we were single. He was also upset I wouldn't move out of town with him. Felt I should let him lead her family. I spoke to online guy every day. All day. We were similar in upbringing. And a lot. We had a bunch in common. We created a friendship to develop into more later. I always knew it had the potential to be more, but he was out of town as well, and I still had my child's father to figure out. My child's father came back to our hometown. I remained single for the first two months of his return. We slowly spoke more and spent more family time together. He seemed to be working on the problems. I was still talking to, and enamored with, and built an online guy. We'd spoken every day, all day for months. I loved that the connection to online guy wasn't physical. I felt it made it more real. I had actual feelings for him. The feelings didn't come from sex or attachment because we didn't see each other physically. We just generally enjoyed speaking and talking about any and everything. After the two months, my child's father and I got together again. I explained this to online guy. He understood. He cared for me, and we had established a bond. But he had an ex that he'd still had feelings for as well. We decided to stay in communication. I told my child's father about him, but referred to him as my best friend. I had very strong emotional feelings towards online guy, and I wasn't sure about a relationship with my child's father. He had left me with our newborn, and online guy was there for me to cry to at 4 a.m., when she wouldn't go to sleep. I was emotionally vulnerable and online guy was there. He allowed me a space to be more than a 23-year-old unmarried mother of two kids with two different fathers. He allowed me the space to be just me, not baby mama me or mama me or sister, daughter, employee me, just me, and he accepted it. My child's father saw online guy mentioning me on Twitter. The nature of the tweets weren't explicit, but flirtatious enough to raise my child father's brow. He'd asked me about online guy, I denied anything more than a platonic relationship. I lied. Although, I wanted to try to make things work with my child's father. It felt impossible, but I was still hopeful enough for a maybe. We didn't have big problems, just small problems that couldn't be compromised on. I still loved him and I didn't want to fail at creating a family unit for the second time, but I loved online guy. My child father's was shot out again and left the city again. I stayed again. 
At this time, he started a relationship. I visited him out of town and he would have the other lady visit as well. He was cheating for about from May to September, even when I thought things were coming together. Coincidentally, they met online too. She lived in Houston. He lived in Dallas. They moved in together in between one of my visits. We hadn't broken up, but he was actively seeing someone else and lying to me about it. The only difference between my child's father and I's or other relationships is that I held off on the relationship or physical meeting until I figured things out with him. He didn't have that consideration for me or our family. We ended up calling everything off when he came back in town with his now girlfriend. I knew nothing about her. He came to see me with gifts, but it didn't feel right. I hadn't seen him in about a month and I was still talking to online guy and he had started this relationship unbeknownst to me. He said he loved me and missed me and gave gifts. I told him I didn't want them and I didn't take them. He was so upset, he unscrewed the license plate he bought for me from my car while I was sitting in it. I didn't react, I just let him have it. The next week, I met his girlfriend in person. <laughs> At the beginning of 2022, they got married. In May, my child's father and I had sex. It was a drunk mistake. Then, we had sex again and again, and those were not mistakes. I realized I don't want to be with him. I thought I did, but I remember why we broke up. I've just made a mess. I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure where to turn with my emotions. I thought I was over him, but I guess the way we closed the relationship left room for uncertainties, and in the back of my mind, I was curious if he loved her more than me. I wonder why he decided to move so boldly. Did he not consider my feelings? Did he not care? Do I deserve to feel upset? I did start my own more than friendship. I feel bad for the wife, she doesn't know, but I can tell she has suspicions. I'm confused for myself on how I got caught up in the situation, but the answer is, I was moving on my emotions rather than my logic. Right now, my child's father is married, but has cheated with me. I'm still in communication with online guy. We met up once, but I haven't seen him in a year. There's no commitment or relationship there, but there are feelings. My child's father is with his wife. We discuss moving forward with each other, but I don't really want to. I thought I did, as I said, but realize now that I don't. I do miss certain things about him and I do have some regret in the breakup. I wish I could articulate what I want to say, but I'm kind of lost for words. I was so hurt when he got with her. I stalked her social media as she seemed so in love with a person I don't know. Why'd he seem so much better for her? Why didn't he gain an understanding with before moving in with her? Why did he come see me with gifts and asking to be together while she was in town meeting his family? Why did he spend his time with her chasing me? Why did I push off meeting and physically engaging with a guy I genuinely cared about so I could figure things out with him and he didn't even try to do that for me? He just moved her in and flew her to meet everyone and lied to me. Why did he reach out to me and express his regret for everything? Why did he pursue me so fervently while he was married? Are there still authentic feelings? Is everything fake? I just want to close this chapter indefinitely. If I don't want to be with him, I don't understand why I engage him. There's still a part of me that is happy to see him. Maybe it's the same hope I had before. I also wanted a family, and maybe it's the chance that I didn't fall this twice and could possibly salvage a proper family unit. I just wanted to share this and see if anyone can offer perspective. I'm lost and having trouble understanding and sorting through my own feelings. I know this is a mess. Our first opinion comes from Miss Jessica Rabbit. Damn girl, what a story. I'm infested. Here's the truth. From an outsider's perspective, mind you, he's playing games with both of you because he enjoys it. Some people get their adrenaline from stealing from Walmart, others from speeding down the highway. And there's even people who go free climbing like they're invincible to get that rush. Then there's truly terrible people who get their adrenaline from cheating and lying. It is a high to almost get caught. These people don't consider others' feelings. I know, because I acted this way when I was a teenager, and I've seen plenty of adults now who do it too. It's disgraceful to bring that sort of selfless trauma into a marriage and children's lies. I don't blame you for being unable to remove yourself entirely, but please, for the love of Jesus himself, stop sleeping with this man. Do better, girl. These are not the only two men on earth. There's got to be a dozen men who have seen you in the last two days that would absolutely love to spend an afternoon getting to know you. Expand your circle, girl. It'll do you wonders. That's all the advice I got for you. I wish you the best of luck. Next up from NC Deep Diver. You got back with your child's dad then cheated on him with online guy? You got married and you were the affair partner with him when he cheated on his wife. 
That is the gist of what I got from this story. The rest was just filling space on the page. I'm so sorry to hear about all this, OP. I surely don't want to give him excuses, but sometimes it's hard for people who are hurting to believe that they deserve to have a happy family and a happy life, especially if they've been surrounded by chaos their whole lives up until that point. I don't want to assume things or make excuses for him, but I'm going to be the devil's advocate and maybe say that he didn't feel good enough to be a dad. Maybe he was afraid that he'd treat the child just as he was treated, but in doing that, he really missed out on an opportunity to break those cycles. That all being said, I totally understand wanting to have a relationship with your ex because you have a child together. You want that sense of family. I think that's totally normal to feel this way. You went into this thinking that things would be different. You see his potential and you see the good in him. That's natural. It's also natural to want to be with someone who's good for you, like online guy. He's different than your ex, and there's the appeal to that. I think it's going to be hard, but what's best for you all is to let go of each other and the hope that you carry that things might work out someday. You may be wasting a lot of time grasping on a false hope. What do you think? Offer OP your perspective in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on our space. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We hate for you to miss out. Also, please let us know what you thought of today's content in the comments below. See you soon.